Hello everyone, my name is Elliot Yu. I'm co-founder and chief analyst for Deep Dive Investing. And today I want to talk about uh, a topic a little different from what I've done in the last couple of videos on this YouTube channel. Uh, and that is to talk about leveraged and inverse exchange traded funds or ETFs. Now you may or may not have heard of these inverse funds which are designed to go up in value when the index that they're designed to track goes down in value. So in other words, you can buy an inverse ETF, for example, on the S&P 500, so that when the S&P 500 goes down in value, the value of that ETF goes up in value. And that can be useful for hedging uh, your exposure to the stock market. Uh, also, leveraged ETFs are designed to return, move faster, return more uh, than the underlying index. For example, there's a leveraged ETF on the S&P 500, the ProShares Ultra S&P 500, that's designed to go up in value by 2% for every 1% advance in the underlying S&P 500 index. And there are also uh, inverse leverage ETFs that go up, or go up in value by 2% for every 1% decline in the S&P 500. Now, uh, if you've heard of these, you may have heard of them kind of negatively. Um, there are a lot of pundits out there. Uh, there are a lot of uh, you know, my competitors in the newsletter industry uh, who say, don't ever buy an inverse or leveraged ETF. Um, they're always a bad uh, idea to buy them. Uh, they're dangerous. Um, you may have also heard it in the mainstream media. This is often the sort of advice, quote unquote, advice that you, you receive. Um, and I want to explain exactly what these are, how they work, and why I don't think you should necessarily be afraid of them. Um, there are, in fact, um, several instances where I do recommend inverse ETFs or leveraged ETFs or both in uh, the various newsletters that I write, the various services that I run, uh, from our pig versus bear trading service, which capitalizes on short-term moves in the market. Uh, we've often traded profitably uh, inverse ETFs and leveraged ETFs. But also in the longer term services, I often use and recommend the inverse ETFs as a hedge. Um, just recently, I made such a recommendation uh, in some of our services, and I received, as always, a lot of emails from readers saying, well, I thought these were dangerous. I thought these were bad buys always. Um, so I thought I'd create this video to explain exactly how uh, these ETFs work and why they're not really a scam, uh, as you might have heard. So first up, I want to throw this, uh, this slide up on your screen right here. Um, and this is actually a chart of, uh, this is a Bloomberg generated chart showing the total return for uh, four different things. Um, the top line there, SPX index, that's a return from the S&P 500 from June 1st, 2017 up until uh, June 3rd, uh, 20, 2019, uh, which was the first trading day in June this year. So this is basically a two year return. Uh, so over the last two years, in total, including dividends reinvested, the S&P 500 is up about 17.5% over this time period, okay? The next line you see on the chart is actually the SSO, uh, which is the ProShares Ultra S&P 500 ETF. Now this is a leveraged ETF I mentioned earlier that's designed to go up in value by 2% for every 1% advance in the S&P 500. And this is what I, very important. I'm going to show you how that works in just a second. Uh, but you can see that over, the la over this two-year period on this chart, from early June of 2017 uh, to early June of this year, the leveraged ETF, the two times leveraged ETF on the S&P 500 was up about 24%. Now you look at that and you say, yeah, but the S&P 500 was up 17.5%. Uh, last time I checked, twice 17.5% is 35%. So the leveraged ultra ETF here is actually lagged. It's not returning twice the S&P 500 over this two year period. It's returning about 10% less than twice the S&P 500 uh, over this two year period. So that's the number that a lot of people look at and say, well, this must be a bad investment. There must be really high fees or it must be poorly run. Uh, to, because it's not tracking uh, the S&P 500, two times the S&P 500's return. And I'll explain in a minute exactly why that is and uh, what you need to know about that. The next one that you see there, SDS, okay, that's the S&P 500 Ultra Short Fund. Okay, so that's designed to go up in value by 2%. It's an ETF designed to go up in value by 2% for every 1% decline in the S&P 500. Now, you look at that here and you say, okay, well, the S&P 500 was up 17.5%. Uh, 
uh, over this time period. Therefore, the ultra-short uh, S&P 500 fund should be down about 35%, right? So 17.5 times 2 uh, is 35. And since it's an inverse fund, it's designed to return the inverse, so the opposite of what the S&P 500 does. So it should be down 35%, but it's only down 28.61%. So again, it's not tracking uh, the index properly. In this case, right, the change was in your favor or in our favor. If you had bought SDS, you would lose less than twice what the S&P 500 has gained over the last couple of years, but it's still a tracking error, right? The last line there on the chart, that SH uh, equity, that is the short, that is the, uh, the inverse S&P 500 fund. So it's designed to go up in value uh, by 1% for every 1% decline in the S&P 500. And as you can see there, uh, the S&P 500 up 17.5% over, over this two-year period. This fund only down about 13%. So again, uh, did not track the inverse of the S&P 500's return. Again, in this case, it was in your favor. Uh, if you'd bought this, you would have lost less than, than what the S&P 500 went up. Uh, but the numbers are still off. And I'm particularly looking at the total return column there, which is total return, which includes dividends. Uh, and all these funds do pay um, distributions uh, and dividends reinvested. You can also look at the price change and see that the numbers don't add up. Uh, S&P 500 on price return only basis over this two year period up 13%. Uh, so that would be 26% for the leverage long. It was only up 22.6% on that basis. Uh, and you can look at the other numbers here and just see that these numbers don't quite add up. So you might be saying, okay, well this is proof of exactly what I'm telling you isn't the case, that these funds aren't very good at tracking either twice the return of the S&P or the inverse return in the S&P 500. Um, they're just not doing a good job. Uh, let me explain to you exactly what's going on here. Um, and I'm going to throw up here this slide. This is actually a quote directly from the ProShares uh, two times S&P 500 ETF. So that's a ProShares Ultra S&P 500 ETF. Symbol is SSO. This is a line out directly taken out of their fund prospectus. Okay, now I know a lot of people who buy ETFs or sell ETFs don't ever read the prospectus, but it's not a bad idea. And this is a line that you're going to find in a lot of uh, these prospectuses that are uh, written for leverage and inverse ETFs. And the line is, this leveraged ProShares ETF seeks a return that is two times the return of its underlying benchmark, which in this case is S&P 500, for a single day. Now notice I've boldfaced those last uh, four uh, words, for a single day. Now that's the key. These funds, these ETFs, do not attempt to track the two times the return of the S&P 500 over a year-long basis, over a one-month basis, over a one-week basis, they attempt to track the returns for a single trading day. That simple line, those simple four words there, uh, are the key to understanding how these funds work and when you should buy them and when you should not buy them. Uh, and uh, I'm going to show you exactly what I mean here in just a second. With these leveraged and inverse ETFs, the key is to understand that it's just as much about the journey, how the, it, how the rally or sell-off in the index unfolds over time, as it is about the destination, okay? So I've created two hypothetical assets, asset A and asset B. Let's just call them an index, a major stock index. And I've created five days of trading return. So on asset A, which is the left-hand side of the slide that should be on your screen right now, uh, in day one, the asset goes up by 2%, 2% on day two, and so on. Each day for this five-day period, the asset increases in value by 2%, exactly 2%. Uh, so the mean return over this time period is 2%. There's no deviation. It always goes up in a value by exactly 2% every single day. Obviously, not particularly realistic. There are not many assets out there like this. If you find one that goes up 2% every trading day, let me know because that would be a great investment. Uh, but you can see if this asset started at a price on day zero, if you will, of 10 bucks, and you bought it at 10 bucks, it goes up 2% every day for five days. 
Uh, your total return after five days is 10.4%. So 10.4% total return. Now let's look at asset B. And this is also an asset that starts out at 10 bucks a share or a unit. And it also returns 10.4% over five trading days. But its returns are much more volatile, right? On day one, it's up 6%. Day two, it's up 8%. Day three, it crashes 10%. Day four, it's up 5%. And day five, it's up 2.1%. So the total return over this five-day period is the same, exactly the same for asset A and asset B. They both go up exactly 10.4%. You can do the math if you like, but uh, that's what this shows. Uh, and the only difference is asset A, kind of a smooth and steady rally, perfectly smooth and steady rally, actually. Um, asset B, much more jagged, what we would say in finance, you know, a much more volatile uh, trading pattern there. Okay, so what does that mean? Uh, let's look at a theoretical or a hypothetical um, two times leveraged ETF on asset A and a two times leveraged as, uh, uh, ETF on asset B. Uh, now these are like SSO, they're designed to track two times the daily return of these assets over the time period. And let's say they do a perfect job of tracking um, those daily returns. Uh, so for example, asset A up 2% every day, which means that uh, the asset A is up 4%. The asset, the, the ETF, the two times leveraged ETF on asset A goes up 4% every day because it's doing twice the daily return. Um, so it goes up 4% every single day. Now, over the course of the five-day period, as I mentioned, uh, the total return from asset A and asset B, but we're looking at asset A here, is 10.4%, right? 2% every day, up 10.4%. Um, if it returned twice that, if the ETF on that asset, the leverage ETF on that asset, returned twice 10.4%, obviously that equals 20.8%. But if you can look at the final column on the right there, the leverage ETF, uh, I, I used, a, I, I used uh, the uh, $10 uh, starting rate for that as well, and I compounded it by 4% every single day because that's twice the daily return. Again, remember that daily return, very important, uh, for each of those five trading days. Um, it actually was up 21.67% over this five-day period. Now, you'll note that 21.6%, 67% is more than 20.8%. Um, in fact, it's almost 0.9% uh, more uh, than twice the total return uh, in the asset A. So this ETF, this two times leverage ETF, is doing exactly what it's designed to do. It's going up twice the daily return in asset A. It's giving you twice the daily return in asset A, but over time periods longer than one day, because of the effect of compounding, uh, it is actually up a lot more than twice the return in asset A. And this is over just five trading days, almost 0.9% difference between twice the five-day return on asset A uh, and what this ETF actually returned because it's tracking daily returns. Okay, so let's do exactly the same process, uh, but let's look at asset B. Again, asset B, kind of crazy trading pattern, right? You know, su super volatile stock. There really aren't many uh, stocks out there this volatile. Um, but it's up 6% in day one. So let's look at the two times leveraged ETF tracking that um, over each of these trading dates. Okay, so the two times leveraged ETF on day one, asset B is up 6%. The ETF is up 12%. Day two, uh, the asset's up 8%. The ETF uh, is up 16%. Uh, and again, I did all the compounding there. Uh, we know that over this five-day period, asset B is up 10.4%. Two times asset B's return would be 20.8%, just like for asset A. But using this daily compounding method I showed you, this asset, uh, this ETF, this two times leveraged ETF on asset B only returned 19.02%. So this is almost 1.8% less than twice the return uh, on the underlying asset B. Um, so uh, this is obviously a, a, a tracking error, and this is what a lot of people look at and say, well, it must be a really bad investment uh, because this ETF that's supposed to give me twice the return on asset B is only up 19%, whereas on a five-day period, um, twice the return of 
asset B would be 20.8%. Uh, so that's a 1.8% difference over just five trading days. Now what's the only difference between asset A and asset B? The return over this five day period is exactly the same, exactly the same. The only difference is the returns from asset A are much less volatile than the returns from asset B. Uh, asset B trades in very volatile fashion. It's up 6% one day, up 8% the next day, down 10% the third day. Um, asset A is much more steady. It's a completely steady uh, return over this five-day five period. Uh, because of this daily compounding effect, which I'm going to explain a bit more uh, here in just a minute, uh, we actually, the more volatile an asset is a rule of thumb, uh, the, the more volatile daily returns are. In other words, you know, if you get a lot of positive days, big positive days, big negative days, uh, then you're going to have much less success tracking the return of that asset using a leverage ETF. In other words, the more volatile the underlying asset, uh, the more the difference is going to be over time between uh, the return on the underlying asset and the return on the leverage ETF. Volatility is key. It's just as much about the journey, how you get from, from today to two, three, four, five days down the road, or a year down the road, than it is about the total return uh, over that time period. Um, we call this the compounding effect or the compounding error. Um, the key thing, again, is that these ETFs are not trying to track the return of an index or an ETF over a long period of time. They're trying to track the daily change in returns. So the return from that ETF is going to consist of the compounding of each of those daily returns. Um, so that is why you see these big variations in performance over longer periods of time. Uh, they're very close on a one-day basis, uh, but over longer periods of time, that compounding error uh, has a larger and larger and larger effect. Uh, the more the stock market, the more the underlying volatility, the bigger that effect is going to be. In fact, as I showed you, on very non-volatile assets, you actually can get more bang for your buck, a bigger return from owning the ETF um, than twice the return in the underlying index. Um, so this happens, a few points to note here, about five points to note. Uh, it incurs whenever an ETF tracks an index's return on a daily basis. So if you are looking to buy an inverse or leveraged ETF and uh, the prospectus says that it, it tries to track twice the daily return or the inverse of the daily return, uh, that word daily, you're going to have compounding effect. Um, this occurs on both long ETFs and those that are inverse ETFs. Uh, as I said, the higher the volatility of the underlying asset, the higher, the bigger this compounding error or compounding effect is going to be. The low, really low volatile assets, you're actually better off buying the ETF. You're going to get more, uh, a larger return uh, than twice the index return over longer periods of time. Uh, the more leverage there is, the bigger the compounding effect. So in other words, if you have a, a two times leverage ETF, you're going to have more of a compounding effect than a one times leverage ETF. In other words, an ETF that's only designed to retract, to to track the daily change one for one, a 1% 1 rise in the index equals a 1% rise in the ETF is going to have less of a compounding effect than a leveraged ETF. Um, some of you may be familiar with these three times leveraged uh, ETFs and ETNs that are designed to go up in value by say 3% for every 1% daily increase in the value of the underlying index. Obviously those are going to have an even bigger compounding effect over time uh, than the one or two times leveraged ETFs. Uh, so the more leverage equals the bigger uh, the compounding effect. Um, also, the longer the holding period, the more deviation you're going to have between uh, daily compounded returns and the total return for the asset over that time period. Um, if you think about that, that makes sense. I showed you an example of only five trading days, but imagine if you'd taken those two assets further into the future. The one continuing to go up 2% every single day and the other one jumping all over the place. You can see how over time, um, compounding of those daily percentage returns is going to have a larger and larger and larger and more magnified effect on that ETF and the way that it tracks the underlying asset over time. Um, so the compounding effect is absolutely crucial. Um, so let's look at a real life example. And again, I'm going to use the uh, SSO, which is the two times leveraged 
ETF on the S&P 500. It's designed to track two times the daily return on the S&P 500, uh, again, every trading day. And I'm going to look at the actual returns, daily returns from SSO and compare them to, the, to twice the daily return uh, in the underlying index. So in other words, um, how accurately did SSO actually replicate its stated strategy of uh, two times the daily return on the S&P 500? And these blue bars that you see there are the daily deviations between twice the S&P's return and the return on the ETF. And you can see there are variations, there are errors. Uh, most of them are 0.1% or less, and there also are kind of an equal number of negative variations and positive variations. So sometimes the SSO tracks a little bit better uh, than two times the return of the underlying index, and sometimes it's a little bit worse. But if we add up all these errors over this entire time period from the beginning of 2018 uh, all the way up to the beginning of June this year, and we sum them all up, uh, it's only off by about 0.72% over this year and a half, 18 month long period. Uh, that's pretty good. Um, you know, the fact is, is that some of that could be fees, right? The fees that the ETF provider, ProShares, um, actually charges to manage the ETF. And honestly, it, most people are, are going to see much higher fees than this if they went out and actually tried to replicate this strategy themselves. If you were to go out and buy the S&P 500 ETF on margin, on two times margin. Uh, for every dollar you invest, you would get about a 2% pop out of the S&P 500. Uh, but most people are gonna pay a much higher margin rate of interest than 0.72% over an 18 month period. Um, so the SSO actually historically has been tracking its daily target pretty well uh, over, over a time period. Um, so there's nothing fishy here. Um, it is all about the reason that we saw those deviations over a longer time period is almost entirely not about some sort of a scam or very high fees or uh, the index not tracking its benchmark on a daily basis as uh, is laid out in the prospectus. It's about that compounding effect over time that I showed you. Okay, so I hope that ex helps explain why volatility is such an important part of uh, determining whether an inverse ETF is going to track the performance of the underlying in index over the course of longer periods of time than one trading day. Uh, because all these uh, ETFs, whether they're leveraged or unleveraged or inverse or regular, uh, they are all trying to track the, in many cases, they're trying to track the daily return uh, in the index. Their benchmark is a daily return in the index. Uh, the more volatile uh, that underlying index, the bigger effect, this compounding effect, is going to be over the course of longer holding periods. So when you move beyond one day, um, those returns can become very large, especially when you're dealing with something the underlying asset or underlying index is very volatile. Now, this is part one of actually a two-part video that I've created. The next part's going to be coming out here uh, in just a few days. And what we're going to do is I'm actually going to take, uh, I'm, I'm going to try to answer the question, um, how volatile is too volatile? Uh, to buy an inverse uh, or leveraged ETF, uh, when you should use the un unleveraged version of an ETF versus the leveraged version of the ETF, how we do it uh, in the various services here at, uh, at, at Capitalist Times, uh, whether that be our short-term trading service, Pig versus Bear, or a longer-term service like Deep Dive Investing or uh, Energy and Income Advisor. Uh, I'll show you when we tend to favor the use of a leveraged versus an unleveraged ETF. Um, so that'll be coming out in a couple of days. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. It helps us out a lot. Uh, in addition, if, uh, if you uh, would like to subscribe to our Deep Dive Investing channel, it's totally free. Hit the subscribe link uh, down below this video. And if you hit that notification bell, uh, it will email you, let you know every time I post a new video here, including, of course, the video, which I'm still editing, uh, but will be up here in a couple of days. So thank you very much for tuning in. I uh, look forward to uh, doing another one of these very soon. Thanks again.